Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy for reading your comments number nine. Uh, before we get into that, this is the second time I'm recording this video because the first time it turned out I made a critical mistake and skipped over an entire video because my brain just noped for some reason. My brain just decided it was... So yeah, anyway, uh, this is the second recording, which is why this video is out a little later, but I hope you guys are down in the premiere chat having some fun uh, in the conversations. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to Guzman Design Co. for coming up with some awesome new channel branding for us uh, here. He put in so much good work and I am so happy to have him. So over here, there's a subscribe button. If this is how you are finding that subscribe button, was designed by him. It's a really cool, a drink with crazy established in 2018 logo. And then obviously the new uh, channel icon for the channel that you guys see when you click on the channel uh, from uh, the YouTube page. So hopefully you guys uh, will go to Guzman Design Co and send him your business. And without any further ado, let's get into reading your comments this week. So the first video is reading your comments number eight. Um, that one literally had one comment on it, and that comment was from Convoy Bebop. I like how you blame us for having to pronounce our names this early in the morning because we're the ones forcing you to read all these comments every weekend. Quit your bitching. <laughs> so that is the channel moderator uh, here on YouTube and also over in Gilded. He is a moderator and he is also going to be the dungeon master for our uh, Dungeons and Dragons that we're going to do exclusively on Gilded just as a starter campaign to see if it's something we would like to bring over here to YouTube. Um, but yeah, so there is that. So it would be fantastic if you guys would go click the link down below for Gilded and send in a Gilded application and come and hang out with all of us. We're building a really, really good, fantastic community over there. I've been surprised with the types of conversations that have happened. I thought it was going to be degeneracy off the walls, and it's not. So, getting into Flying Sparks, Volume 1, Chapter 1, Complicated Relationships. Kyle Phillips says, oh, Flying Sparks. I get it now. LOL. Cute. <laughs> Uh, Giovanni Tuminia, big JDA fan here. I have all four volumes of Flying Sparks, plus the Flying Sparks Meta Man special issue, which really offers a good source of Meta Girl's origins. This is a Pursuits Pursuit comic book. Wholesome, non-political, fun, unpretentious, unpredictable. Everything we can expect from a well-written comic book that you don't have to be concerned with leaving laying around for the kids to read. Well, that is fantastic. And I like uh, I like looking into books where the kids can actually read them, too, um, because I think uh, I didn't read a lot as a kid, not because I couldn't. I have, I have fairly high reading proficiency. Um, I just always thought it was boring, which isn't good. So, um, yeah, I, I, I did not train that muscle in my brain to enjoy reading, and uh, I want to do that now. So. Drake Tux Tungsten, coffee shop drama. Yes, yes, coffee shop drama. Drake Tungsten again. He's newer to the channel. Well, I appreciate him commenting as much as he is. Great review. Well, it was more of uh, covering the book and kind of adding my personality to it, which I haven't got any work done on that or Shadowbinders this week at all. My time has just been completely eviscerated um, between the day job and coming home and trying to do stuff at night and then um, had some weekend projects and kids were having activities. Yeah, it's it's insane to try to keep a video out every single day. Um, I had pretty much supply content to the channel between live streams and videos uh, Sunday through Friday. I think I missed Monday last week because I was really tired. Uh, drank tungsten, minor constructive criticism. His name is John, not Jason. Yeah, so that's a big mistake of mine. Seeing his name spelled J-O-N messes with my head really bad. Um, Because to me, John is J-O-H-N. And that's what I think about when I think about, um, you know, seeing the name John. And so J-O-N, it just like my brain is like, no, 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 I'll fix it. And it adds an A and an S in there and then turns it to Jason. And I'm like, I, I know his name. I just, I don't know. Something about the spelling of J-O-N just messes with my head. All right. That was all the comments on the Flying Sparks video. 
uh, moving over to Eric July and Rip Reverse and what we need to do for culture. I skipped this entire fucking video when I just read this. This was the reason I was like, I looked back and I was like, wait a minute. I didn't read any of that. I was like, ah, oh crap. And I, there was a lot of people that commented on this um, with some really, really insightful things. Some very, very long comments, actually. And I just, I, got, I don't know, my brain, I, I don't know, my brain shut down this morning. It didn't even, it didn't even want to see it. So, uh, Yosaru, uh, not sure if you made this available to view as you uploaded. If so, I would suggest having it fully upload before making it public. The force low quality is rough uh, and getting return uh, and getting return clicks is rough too. Uh, maybe upload private and verify that it can be seen at higher res before posting. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, tough articulating at the moment. No, yo, sorry, you are 100% right there. So on this one here, I was trying to get it out. I try to have my videos out no later than like 8 p.m. Anywhere between 6 to 8 p.m. is when I upload. Because that's just when I, I can. And in a rush, I, I didn't let the video... Usually I just let the videos post at standard definition because... And it's something I need to change. For me, I don't care about a be a video being at high res because I just listen, right? That's all I do. I listen to to videos and what people are talking about. I don't I don't watch a lot. So for me, I've never really put much stock into a lot of the video stuff. But your comment here with the low resolution as well as fighting with like this cheap camera that I have. I actually have a better camera. Com well, hopefully it's a better camera. Hopefully, hopefully it's a better camera. I have no idea. Um, it could not be. It could be a terrible camera. It should be here today. But um, you actually made me think about, you know, caring about my video presentation a lot more than just my um, audio presentation. I do take a lot of pride in my audio and I am trying to make sure that you guys are getting good audio as well as good video now. So I do apologize. I've also been doing a lot of this on a budget, but no, I will be working to make sure that you guys are getting better quality video now instead of just focusing mostly on my audio. Uh, Midnight Mike, when Crypto showed up in Smallville all those years ago, I was the guy that my uh, friends called to find out if this was a comic book thing or not. Yeah, I had friends that I would, hey, dude, did that happen in the comic? They're like, no, that didn't happen in the comics. I was like, oh, like Red Kryptonite? People were like, yeah, no, that shit was like made up like that yeah uh, they eventually incorporated like red kryptonite and the different versions of kryptonite into the comic books but yeah there was or no red kryptonite was there no it was the black one which one was it it was the one that like split him in two or something. i can't it was it was the different there was red and green kryptonite and then there was just um oh i don't remember i don't remember it's been so long since i've looked into superman lore i gave up on superman lore a long time ago basically Basically, around the time that Zack Snyder started bastardizing Superman, I was just kind of done with Superman. I was like, eh, eh, eh. well, oh, there, that's a character that, yeah, I yeah, fucking, I blame Zack Snyder for the destruction in, of modern comic. But I fucking hate the Snyderverse. I really do with passion. It's just, he doesn't understand those characters. Anyway, Xavier Guzman, I hope Eric keeps getting all the support um, that Isom got for the rest of his comics. I'm also hoping that they're good and his comics just keep gaining more and more traction. Also, thanks for the shout out. Yeah, Xavier Guzman, De Guzman Design Code down below. Go check him out. Seriously, he did some fantastic work for the channel. Uh, and I'm very, very excited uh, uh, to have worked with him. And hopefully I'll be able to work with him in the future. Pixie Bubbles, I think the first Marvel comic was the Fantastic Four. I don't know. Oh, I didn't even like that comment. Um, I don't know if, um, I don't think it was. I think the first Marvel comic was something about the Human Torch, but not specifically the Fantastic Four. I think they took the idea from that original one and added it into the Fantastic Four years later. But I looked it up. I think Marvel Comics number one was, it, had, it was something about the Human Torch uh, there. All right, DGC comes in hot with four paragraphs here. Uh, and that is not to dog on DGC. I really love when people do longer comments because it's very, I like to deconstruct and have that conversation with you guys. And that's part of the reason I do this. On top of correcting my mistakes, I actually get to talk with you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys are down in the premiere chat right now enjoying, uh, enjoying this. So DGC, one of the things Eric's needs 
uh, needs to if he wants to make a full-fledged comic company, and one that eventually rivals the big two, or even one that is up there with Image or Boom, is to develop consistency, not just with stories, but also with uh, product delivery. Uh, one of the big issues with the crowdfund scene is the time to get a book and uh, the time to get a follow issue. The closest I have seen to developing a somewhat steady schedule is Iconic Comics. Uh, they are far from perfect and there seems to be a long time in between issues, but they are fairly quick once the book is posted on Kickstarter. They are certainly better than anyone else I have seen or supported in the past. Okay, let's address that. I think you are absolutely correct. I think that once Eric July starts to get his... Um, uh, starts to get his distributing down because he is doing all the, the distribution himself. This issue needs to be corrected where um, once we buy the book, we shouldn't be two months or three months away from having the book in our hands. Uh, hopefully that will get fixed. That is, I understand that everything scaled up and Eric couldn't keep up. I don't blame him for that, right? After this initial thing though, I would expect the books to come out more expediently. Um, let me know if you think that I'm wrong about that. I, but I, I think if he's going to be doing two or three of these a year, he should have it to a point, maybe not after the second one, but definitely by the third one where a book is ordered and you have your book within a month. I don't think that that's... Uh, again, now if all of a sudden, ISM number one, it's three and a half million campaign. Maybe ISM number two comes out and everybody's losing. And all of a sudden, it's a 10 to $15 million campaign. And he has to scale again. If something like that happens, okay, you can expect lead time. However, if it's just another $3 million campaign, which he should be scaling to handle right now, um, I don't see any reason why he should not push to half the time that or less yeah it's a half the time that it's taking to get because that's the only thing is we've been talking about you know it's two months later and we're still not going to be getting our books for another two weeks at this point i think that that is something that should be worked out back to G dgc's comment i saw on one of eric's podcasts that someone asked him if he thought he could get four books out a year he said he felt he could and if he can keep uh, to the schedule, that will go a long way to establishing credibility. It would also make it easier to expand in the direct market stores. Very true. Uh, they would likely be more willing to carry books if they thought he could provide a product on a more consistent basis. It could also help uh, with printing. So if a printer is getting steady orders from him every month, then the printer is more likely to give him some deals and make uh, his orders priority. And that goes into the getting the books faster thing. So when I say getting my book faster, I don't just mean, oh, well, he should just already have it. I mean that he needs to be working on all of these things that are, uh, all of these things that go into the... Uh, shipping of the book right yeah so that's 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 a thing um so man i'm gonna do a review on this this new soundboard that i got this thing has like a four millisecond delay and it is no it's more than four milliseconds it's probably closer to a 10 millisecond delay a 10 or a 20 millisecond delay and it's pissing me off because I can, it sounds like a really, really piss poor reverb in the audio monitoring, and it shouldn't sound like that. Because I'm hearing my voice out here, and then I hear what comes through the headphones. I'm gonna do because they're like, "Oh, this is monitoring with no, no, this is not, this is not." I have had monitoring with my old soundboards where I, my USB that I would run in, and then I'd hook up my analog soundboard and then send it back to me. That had no delay. That was pure straight up monitoring. The thing that I have upstairs that cost $50, the little Behringer, you hit direct monitor on that thing. Uh, that's for uh, the PlayStation 4, my wife to have a better sound setup. Um, but you hit direct monitoring and that thing, no delay. This thing, which cost me $100, which has a bunch of different bells and whistles on it, can't do direct monitoring well. It has, like I said, this is like a, this is like a 10 to 20, uh, there's probably a 10 to 15 millisecond delay. It is bad and it's bothering me. Uh, so anyway, all right, back to DGC. Sorry, I just had to throw that out there. This thing's pissing me off. All right. 
Plus, as his company grows, he can bring on more developers to start uh, new products within the this new universe he can space out these graphic novels so that customers could be getting a graphic novel a month if they bought uh enough books uh the ripperverse was producing so he is making isom and that has to come out in january um uh january uh march june and september uh, another team is making uh, a new book called steel warrior and that book comes out february april july october uh, a third book featuring Yaira ships in March, May, August, uh, and November. So with three or four books, you could put a Ripperverse comic in the customer's hands every month, assuming they bought all the new titles. So aside from good stories and art, I really want to see some consistency with books that I can feel uh, that I can feel that when I order a book, I won't be waiting months or years. Uh, to see it show up on my doorstep i absolutely agree um i think if he was going to do a book a month like that he would have to have an incredible back catalog of story writing um and editing and if eric is going to be writing all of these stories and writing um or he is just going to have to become the editor and uh people write a yaira story and he says yes or no to it being that he's running the company and then they have to go back to the drawing board and do that um so that's again that that could be something he could do but he's gonna have to relinquish all of the writing that he's getting into uh i don't know if he's ready to do that i don't know if he wants to write the first three or four or five or ten comics himself and then say see how i wrote it do that don't do that this is my book not your book i pay you to write for me which is what he should absolutely fucking say to the writers he's like now look if you got an idea and you make my what i wrote even better let's go for it but don't put your bullshit into it he needs to say that so thank you so much dgc for that that was i love that comment dude i love when you guys come in and they and they explain things very well it's very nice dead end 4991 i'm starting to think that i'm the only one that doesn't care about identifying slash relating to characters lol i really just like a good story the only time i tend to relate to characters is when i'm playing an rpg video game great bid by the way i'm really happy about uh, you and the newly gained success. Oh, and I, that confused me. I was like, newly gained success. And he just meant that a lot of subscribers are coming to the channel. And yeah, and a lot more have come since Shadowversity and Nightwatch shared the video that I did about him. So that was, that was epically awesome. I loved that. That was so cool. Um, yeah, I just, that was really great. I thought that was so fantastic. So thank you so much, Dead End 4991 Not Morel name. I see what you did there, good sir. Not Morel name. Uh, I think if it's in the traditional proven format, it will probably do fine, but a $35 comic book is not a price point for mainstream people. Assuming it's any good, the first step would be dropping the price, reaching more people, build the brand, sell more merch. The comic book is basically an ad uh, for merch. Anyway, I'd be surprised if half the uh, money came from the books. Uh, it's all about merch. <laughs> merch, baby. <laughs> He's a baby. Uh, B-E-H-B-A-Y. That's how he spelled it, and I like that. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric personally could also do things like talk to actual comic book people outside of Comicsgate. He could stay away from Fox and stop talk, uh, and stop with the woke talk. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think he wants to be mainstream, but uh, but it's very easy to do. Normies, <laughs> oh god, uh, normies are stupid and are mostly uh, against him because black people shouldn't be on Fox, even though Black Sands uh, is co-owned by a white conservative with a history of being on Fox. Yeah, so that's the funny one, right? Um, yeah, normies are a strange group. I don't know. Am I a normie? I f I feel like. I feel like I'm half a normie. Like I'm half a nerd, half a normie because of where I've existed in the space. Like I'm not a super fan of anything, but I know a lot of information about a lot of different types of comics and things like that. Yeah, I know. So I wouldn't say that I'm a, like, I, I don't think I'm a super fan of anything. And I haven't read a lot of like authors books and stuff like that. I have listened to a lot of video explanations. I have actually read a lot of articles explaining things. I have read theory stuff. Um, 
I don't know. Does that make me a normie? I don't know. I, again, I, I'm like a nerd. I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I've always wondered if I'm more of a normie than I think I am. I probably fucking am. I'm probably, this is the fucking normie channel. Fuck it. Let's just, I'm a fucking normie. Damn it. And no, I'm not stupid. Not my real name. Just because I'm a fucking normie. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. You guys tell me. Am I a fucking normie? I don't know. I, I'd like to think that I've always been kind of a nerd. I mean, I was a kid watching fucking Power Rangers after I had kids. <laughs> and I was a kid when I had, fuck, I was 20 years old when my first kid was born. Um, Still watch cartoons. I still, you know, read read and listen to fan theories. and so, I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me. What? What do I have? What does a person have to do to go from being a normie into like being an actual like part of a nerd and part of like just fandom and shit like that? Because there's a lot. So, yeah, you tell me like what what does that what does a person have to do to go to get into that? Uh, Giovanni Tuminia. Uh, I think it's uh, incorrect to assume that as Isom grows that Eric will eventually have to resort to. Uh, the element, uh, the element of multiverse and uh, alternate dimensions. Uh, the day we go for isoms interacting with each other, I'm out. Um. So, and I had to send that was Giovanni Tumenia, and I had to respond to that. I was like, wait a minute, I'm a little confused. I didn't mention the multiverse at all. Um, I mean, and I, he doesn't have to go to multiverse. He can just do space in different worlds, in different galaxies that have nothing to fucking do with each other. See, the problem with like multiverses is, is that these people are very small brained and they don't understand a galaxy is a huge place. That's why Star Wars took place in a galaxy far, far away and why Star Wars used to feel so massive because a galaxy is a big place. There are places in the galaxy that a lot of people have never fucking been, right? And so even if he just worked in the Milky Way, I mean, that's something that The Expanse did so freaking well is showing how long, even with having 1G thrust, third of G thrust, you know, the 9Gs of thrust, how long it takes. Ah, uh, something's in my eye. Ah, uh, something's in my eye how long it actually takes to get from planet to planet to planet. I mean, it is a long period of time to do those things. And I think small brained people don't understand it. So they just make it seem like stuff can just happen from planet to planet next door because it's, for them, it's no different than going down the street. Well, that's how close another planet is, right? We can't just, no, no. So you're an idiot and you shouldn't be writing fucking comic books. And as long as Eric understands that a galaxy is that fucking big and that huge and appropriately writes for that, I don't think he has to multiverse at all in any way. Like, I also think that that's why he's not going to be doing any alien interaction in Isom uh, right away. All right. Uh, Monty Herm. Uh, that, that's a new name, Monty Herm. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. I agree to get leverage in society. This movement needs to become uh, the new counterculture. We have now seen old counterculture now sell out to the establishment because uh because the old counterculture won and became the uh, hegemonic culture in the West. Um, it's why it's why we see band members of Rage Against the Machine. Oh God, yeah, you mean Raging for the Machine? Uh, Rage Against the Machine shill for the dogma of the fourth great religion, which has taken over the culture. Right? Thank you for calling it the fourth great religion. Thank you for calling it the fourth great religion, which has taken over the culture right now becoming the complete antithesis of the band's ethos back in the day when they were at the core of the counterculture years ago. Yes. Um, the other part of this uh, movement I think needs to be taken seriously as well is to fight for school choice uh, because the fourth great religion is not only dominating the culture right now, but also has hijacked the educational system where their dogma can be indoctrinated into the younger generations because they're not having children above the level of replacement. Uh, so they have to dominate the next generation through the educational system and the mainstream culture. Yes, I totally agree. Um, my kids are homeschooled. And uh, my wife and I have also superseded the replacement rate, um, thankfully. And uh, we still go back and forth whether or not we want to keep multiplying or not. But for right now, we don't. 
So, there is something in my eye, and I can't fucking get it out. It's really bothering me. Anyway, Monty Herm, I think that this is the, the, very well. The fourth great religion, yes. Um, there's something that I see on TimCast all the time. They say, you know, the left doesn't have kids. They have yours, right? The left doesn't have their own kids. They have yours. And that's the whole thing that I hate about the government. The, the, just government education in general. I think the Department of Education and uh, public schooling should be abolished outright, period. I mean, to the point where I'm not the type of person who likes to make laws, but I think that we should, uh, I think that there should be an amendment to the Constitution stipulating that the government cannot ever involve itself monetarily or in any way with a, uh, with a school system at all, period. That's it. Done. No government funding. Nothing. That funding needs to come from the community and communities need to decide how their kids uh, need to be taught. Uh, I am very, that's, again, been like this for a while. That's why I homeschool my kids. I was mostly homeschooled too. So yeah, that's a big, big fucking thing. That is a huge thing that we need to do is get our children away from these rat bastards. They're, they're child abusers and... I'm not going to say that because YouTube doesn't like when I say that. Uh, Li Yu. Uh, so thank you, Monty Herm, for that. That was a great comment. So Li Yu is here. I think one more thing people can do uh, as a community and fan base is check out how they gatekeep. It's one thing to call out bad actors and weirdos, but another thing uh, to get people to join a fandom. Yes. Um, And I think the idea behind gatekeeping needs to be obviously... Everybody is welcome to read the book. Not everybody is welcome to write the book. Only select individuals should be writing the stories. And I think that's where people get the gatekeeping wrong. Well, what? I can't write this story because I'm a woman. No, you can't write this story because you want to inject fucking ideology that has nothing to do with it. Okay? Shut the fuck up. It's got nothing to do with because you're a woman. Like, I fucking hate that shit. Well, I can't write this because I'm trans. No, you can't write this because... You specifically want to do a self-insert character that is completely Mary sued and completely eviscerates the fucking chronology and the logic of the fucking book. That's why you can't write it. No, we need to gatekeep the writers of these things and the creators of these things, not the community around them. And that's where gatekeeping needs to be. All right, on to the first impressions of the Shadow of the Conqueror graphic novel from Shadowversity, which they fucking shared. They shared yesterday morning, and we the, the channel gained oh, like 25 subscribers. Um, actually, you know what? Let me pull that up right now and see if I can show you guys where we are at. Oh, mm, stupid code. And I hate the fingerprint thing. I'm not going to put my fingerprint in this damn thing. I don't... My, my fingerprint's already down in other places. They don't. They don't need... They don't need my fingerprints. All right. Yep. Let's see. Camera focus. Camera focus. Do it. All right. You kind of saw it. 737 subscribers. Holy crap, guys. <laughs> That's insane. And I think this is the, probably the video of the week where I can really do that. Because I get to talk with you guys. Hopefully, you're in the premiere chat having a good time. Um, obviously this is pre-recorded. Hopefully I am down there commenting with you because if I'm not, I'm just a jackass, but this is something where, uh, I feel like I can really talk with you guys, update you guys on the channel, tell you guys about the D and D campaign that's going to happen over in Gilded, which we are working out. I have to get with Convoy Bebop today and we have to sort out some technology stuff and then just a whole bunch of other things. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's just something that I really enjoy doing these videos for. I get to talk with you guys. I get to flesh out my thoughts more. Uh, you guys get to call me out, tell me if I'm wrong, and I will read it. Uh, you know, and to the best ability, I will read it. Um, obviously, if the channel grows to a point where there's thousands of comments on every video, I won't be able to. I won't be able to do that. I will. I will have to make an executive decision as to how I'm going to handle that. I don't ever want to get rid of this though, um, because I feel that this is important. This is this is an important way to talk with you guys, and so I really love doing that. And Stuff gets shared, and I, the channel's been shared by two massive channels at this point, which is really, really cool. So I'm so humbled that Clownfish TV and Shadowversity have both shared this channel. I just, 
That's so humbling to me. So, uh, but anyway, let's get it back to the comments. Kyle Phillips, I've always been more into movies and TV shows too, but after the recent fall of Hollywood, I started reading and writing way more. I have uh, that screenplay. It's technically a movie that will play in your mind if you read it. Yeah, I have to read that, Kyle Phillips. I'm so sorry. I got to do that. Um, thank you for commenting, man. Hal's XD. Uh, first. So he was like, first. Like, you know, saying he was first uh, here, which maybe. Um, also... Uh, road to 800 subs. Here we go. Yeah, that would be amazing. I don't know how to get to 800 subs. Do you guys share it and just shout me from the rooftops or the YouTube algorithm or I don't know. If you guys know how to get me to 800 subs uh, without doing She-Hulk reviews, Lord of the Rings reviews or uh, the, the Game of Thrones show, House of the Dragon reviews, um, then yeah, because those aren't my thing. Like, if you guys know how to make my thing, get me to 800 subs, that would be awesome. So, uh, 800 subs, here we go. If you're looking for more fantasy indie comics, check out Fiendish Chapter 2 Origins by Irene uh, Strachow Strachowski. Uh, a dark fantasy comic about the mysteries that lurk between the dimensions. Uh, and she mixed styles of Western with Eastern manga style. That sounds really cool. Also, check out Core Drath The Reckoning uh, by Andy Smith. Uh, Star-Crossed Lovers, uh, Core Drath and uh andriana uh must avenge the brutal slaughter of his tribe if you love the barbarian stuff like conan the barbarian you'll love that i don't know if i do because i've never really read conan the barbarian i know of him but i've never really read it so thank you so much hal's xd for being here faux peasy says shout out uh didn't even know about this but will likely uh check it out eventually yeah i like the artwork so i am definitely gonna try to definitely gonna try to go for this uh, independent comics fans. Uh, the artist is Mike S. Miller. He also created his own creator-owned Indiegogo crowdfunded comic book superhero series called Lone Star. It, it is a uh, pretty. It is pretty good. Uh, it's his vampire hunter, uh, Texan Captain America. It's pretty cool too. He is a good artist. Yeah. It, um. He did a lot of really really great work on the Injustice series, and that's how I knew. Uh, that's where I've seen his artwork before is on Injustice. That was so, so fantastic. I love that. That was just, that was great work to do um, uh, on that series. So, yeah. Um, uh, Drake Tungsten comments. I've read the novel. I really liked it. I Yeah, I'm going to have to read it eventually, I guess. So, once I get more time, I... The problem is, is balancing, I don't, well, one, I don't have a nine to five. The nine to five is completely preposterous to me that somebody would wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and be home by like 5.30 or six. That's insane. I wake up at 3.45 in the morning and I'm not home until 6.30 or seven a lot of nights. Some days I get lucky and I can be home by like four. But I am, I am on the road by five o'clock every morning. 4.45 to 5 every morning. Um, and then I get home and around, if I'm lucky, 5.30 or 6. Uh, sometimes 6.30 or 7. Most of the time, you know, between 6 and 6.30. Uh, run down here. Try to get a video out for you guys. Try to push those uh, videos and get them to you before 8, before 8 p.m. Because that seems to be like when I've established making these videos is anywhere between 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, basically I have about an hour or a half hour to just chill with my wife and talk with her. And then I go to bed at nine o'clock because I wake up at three forty-five. So yeah, it's, that's a thing, man. That's, a, that's, a, and so when everybody's recommending all these books and Hey, watch this show and watch that show and this show and that, and like, I don't. I don't have the time. The only reason I watched the, uh, which I'm going to do a review on it, uh, the Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, the only reason I watched it, one, there were people in like the Geeks and Gamers space saying it was really good. Um, I won't give anything away. <laughs> I have thoughts. Um, but the only reason that I even watched that is because I woke up early as hell yesterday and I was like, damn it, I need a video, a topic idea to do. Um, and I didn't have time to really come down here and start working on um, the comic book 
uh, chapter videos that I've been doing. Uh, and the kids were asleep and I wouldn't let them sleep. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just sit here and watch this show and start taking some notes on it. And I did. Um, and then I kind of finished it yesterday. It's 10 episodes. There's 25 minutes a piece. And then obviously there's fluff. So it's probably closer to 20 minutes a piece. So you figure three episodes an hour. It's about three and a half hours to watch the whole damn thing. Maybe give or take. Um, so it's not that bad. But yeah, I'm going to do that because I just I I optimized my time yesterday morning because I woke up early because I woke up at 530 on a Saturday, slept in until 530 on a Saturday. So uh, and then, you know, we had family stuff to do all day. And then I, I was building a workbench for my wife uh, from some scrap lumber that I got from work. And then, yeah, uh, I'm fighting time here. Um, the, the goal here is hopefully one of these days this channel gets to a point where I don't have to fight that time and I can dedicate time to this channel and I could still wake up at 345 in the morning but start reading the comic books or start reading the books that you guys are suggesting or research or review something or watch a show and then I could start doing video uh, content creation for you guys a lot more that's the goal who knows maybe it'll never happen might never happen but got to keep trying can't can't quit the grind right can't quit the grind resistance publishing sets dude wait until you get a hold of my superhero book uh, it's nothing like the other cape and tights books out there. So yeah, Resistance Publishing, make sure you keep up with the channel and that when that thing is ready or you're crowdfunding it or whatever you're doing, uh, let me know. Tell me where to go. Tell me what to look up. Send me a link. Join the Gilded uh, and post it there. So that way the Gilded community can check it out. And then I, I'll do a first impressions of it on the channel here because the channel exists because of all you guys out there. So if I'm not, if I'm not shouting you guys out, you know, as much as I, I can or I think possible, then I don't think that, uh, um, yeah, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that's right. I don't know. I just, I appreciate everything you guys do. I don't know. Did I read this one already? Drake Tungsten said, I read the novel. I really liked it. I might have skipped over that one in my rant there. But yeah, no, I am going to have to read his, his novel now. Again, getting back to that whole time thing, trying to figure it out. Um... I don't know if you guys know how to help my channel just blow the hell up. Let me know. Let me know. If you guys know how to help my channel blow the hell up, um, I will. Uh, I would absolutely love to know, because uh, that would just be amazing. So, uh, Giovanni Tumania, sorry, not enough representation and forced diversity in this, and it seems like no one will be beating me upside the head with social justice rhetorics either. All jokes aside, I support this and other projects yeah i'm glad that we're getting back into just some good storytelling so that's that's good stuff man i'm very glad that we're getting back into that uh sassy 77 i love your little rant at the end my hubby and i often rant about the state of things today i hope your channel takes off for you thank you so much sassy 77 and she continues it was smart of Chad to get Mahler to speak. I think he was on FNT once when a super chat said he talks like calligraphy looks. LOL. I would have to agree. I mean, I mean this in a nice way, but him talking can just make me fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Mahler got that good, good on the voice. Like, you know, he comes in like, this is a story about, and then sounds like way better than what I just did because I don't. I don't have that kind of good good in the voice. Like, I don't have, like, the talking good good, right? Like, Mahler got that good good, you know? And he's just like, I am going to make your clothes fall off by talking to you. I'm like, I'm a dude, Mahler, stop. No. <laughs> like, you know, because he's got the good good. But, yeah, so, uh, no. it's And that's, I think, one of those things that everybody, the first time they heard Mahler's voice, you're just like, holy crap. Um, and he doesn't sound that much different. All he does is he just kind of deepens it a little bit. He doesn't really do a whole lot there. Uh, the Parents, that's a new name. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the channel. For a first novel, the writing is on par with the first self-published uh, work. Uh, reading the sample writing on Amazon does show it needs work. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's going to be a first novel. Like everybody, and here's the thing. It doesn't matter if it's your first or 10th novel. Everything needs work and everything needs to be improved on. If you stop improving, just you're, you're done living. And I don't mean that like you're doing like, like you know, like self-deletion or anything. But the intent of life is to always improve. And if you're not, and I think that that's why so many people have so many problems nowadays. If you're not living 
with the intent to constantly improve and constantly be better and figure out the awesomeness that's just buried inside of you, then you're not living. And I think that's where this cultural depression is coming from lately. God, it makes me sad. Uh, Daniel Davis. I don't know if he's been here before or not. Shadow of the Conqueror is my favorite fantasy book. Well worth a read. I guess I'm going to have to check it out. Daniel Davis, thank you so much. Um, Man, this mic is really hot. I'm trying to figure out how to how to make that work. Maybe, well, maybe if I go up on the preamp and then lower the post amp. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going right about there. Okay. I got to figure this damn thing out. It's, it's being weird. It's being, it's being very, very, very weird. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Daniel Davis. Set Buttweiser or Betweiser, Betweiser. I'm so sorry. Set Betweiser, um, fan fantasy comics, huh? Uh, try White Sand series by Brandon Sanderson. It's a short series. I think only three graphic novels, but worth it. I may have to try that one. Thank you so much, Seth. And I, you are a new name to the channel, I think. So thank you so much for commenting. Uh, uh, Dra Draconian America. That is a weird way to spell Draconian. D-R-A-Y-C-K. O N I A N America. I, I very weird that man that word just throws me off because I'm not used to seeing it spelled that way. Uh, uh, Shad sent me here. Keep up the good work and the grind. I appreciate it. I am doing the best to do my grind. I'm um I'm doing my best to get you guys five to seven pieces of content that you guys can enjoy every week. I think I missed Monday last week, but outside of that, I was either live on the channel or uploading a video for you guys. So I'm doing my best to make sure that you guys have content every day of the week around anywhere between 6 p.m. Central and 8 p.m. Central. Um, uh, Seth Betweiser uh, comments again, as far as child friendly goes, Shadow of the Conqueror does have some more mature themes. I don't know how much the graphic novel will get into, but it should be fine for high school plus. So if it's fine for, if it's fine for high school plus, I would say if it's like PG-13, um, as long as there's no gratuitous nudity, and uh, depending on what the violence level is, um, I would say that's probably okay. Just keep in mind, my kids have like played Call of Duty with me. Um, my kids have played uh, Ghost of Tsushima um, because I don't really think there's anything in there outside of when Jin Sakai jumps in or gets into like the bath. He has a butt, but, every, but my kids all know everybody has a butt, right? Um there are things that are not appropriate for them. Gratuitous nudity, uh, sex, absolutely out of the question. My kids don't even need to be thinking about that shit. Um, uh, depending on how far the violence goes, like I would not let my kids watch something like Invincible. But that being said, my kids, also, one of my kids wanted to watch John Wick with us. And we were like, if you want to, yeah, because John Wicks is just guns and bullets. Now, I don't think I would let my kids watch something like the Saw movies. Absolutely not. Or probably the, um, what was it? The uh, Punisher, was it Punisher Warzone or I don't know. The second Punisher movie that didn't have Thomas Jane. I, I know everybody's like, Thomas Jane wasn't really the Punisher. I'm like, yeah, but I don't care. I liked that movie. So fuck off. Um, but yeah, so as as long as it's just like violence in like the PG-13 realm and it's not just overly like like, like grotesque and 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 graphic violence, I think my kids could probably handle it. Again, draw the line at nudity. That's not a thing. I draw the line at sex. That's not a thing. I don't even want like um, uh, uh, like tasteful fucking like silhouettes of a sex scene. No, my kids don't even need to see that shit. Um, so as long as none of that's in there, we should be good to go. Uh, Mike has bad knees. I'm not too far behind you, man. <laughs> yeah, apparently with the day you turn 30, uh, your knees just decide they're going to start working slightly less. And here's the thing is, I was a lot kinder to my body when I was younger, except for my left arm. My left arm's fucked. Uh, but I was a lot kinder to my body when I was younger. So that being said, uh, I'm not as bad off as a lot of my friends are. But God, a lot of my friends, man, they sound like 60. I, I still feel like I'm in my young 20s. I still feel like it, even though, yeah, I'm 30, but I still feel like I'm in my younger 20s, so. And that's just because I somewhat eat healthier. I mean, I drink way too much fucking beer, though, so. Um, 
But anyway, Mike has bad knees. I dropped 50 on it myself. The leather bound looked cool, but out of my price range. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, that leather bound looks the good, good. Uh, I'm gonna have to do that. I, I want the leather bound so fucking bad. I need to go, hey, babe, my wife, real quick. I'll be like, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. <laughs> you guys, if you guys watch this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Jim Knoll fantasy is the best. Yes, I am starting to like the fantasy. Uh, Jim Knoll, Shadow of the Conqueror, not for young kids. And then I, so thank you for that, Jim Knoll. Also, I, um, I would, I, I vet everything before I let my kids get into it. So we watch and vet everything before. Uh, even whatever YouTube channels our kids are watching, like the, you know, the Minecraft crap that they're doing or like the Roblox shit or like whatever, like I, I'll be listening. If I hear something that's said in a specific way, I will go take it, you know, and my wife and I review the channel and then we uh, we we make sure to handle that. So uh, but most of the time my kids are outside playing or coloring or doing arts and crafts. Um, yeah, I play some video games once in a while, but a lot of times they're just getting outside and living life. And that's a great thing about homeschooling, too, is that. Um, your kids can actually get taught the things that they need to get taught. Like my kids will know how to do their taxes, you know, yeah, they're going to know how to do their taxes. I'm going to go over history with them and teach them the importance of it. But, you know, they're going to know how to do their taxes. They're going to stand banking savings. They're going to understand, you know, how to actually work. I'm going to push them more towards trades versus uh, college. I will not be paying for college. I think it's a completely bunk system. And anybody who is sending their children to college is intentionally trying to destroy their children mentally, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. The college education system is dog shit. It needs to be eradicated. And I think people need to just go start apprenticing for uh, masters again. Uh, that's where we need to get back to. That's what most human civilization was built on. And there's no reason we can't get back to that. Um, uh, Manga Saft. I put it on my Amazon Christmas list, list. Much love from Germany. That's so fucking cool. Much love from the U.S. Manga Saft. If you see this video, much love from the U.S. too. Thank you for visiting this super tiny channel. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. False Profiteer. I'm quite... I'm I I think he meant I've but he put I'm so I'm gonna read it I've I've quite enjoyed Shad's book if you're a fan of Brandon Sanderson you're liable to like Shadow of the Conqueror the art for the graphic novel looks rad yes the art looks great and that's the second or third time somebody's mentioned Brandon Sanderson on this video like a lot of people were talking about him so and then false profiteers some people came in and started talking about Brandon Sanderson and I also talked there for a second so yeah it's uh Brandon Sanderson sounds like somebody I need to check out uh, Shai Tan. Uh, I'm only halfway through listening to his book and I absolutely love it so far. Also, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding are my favorite audiobook duo as well. So that helps. I haven't even finished and I've backed this project. That shows the enthusiasm that we have around building our own uh, culture again, building our culture again with fantastic storytellings and the things that we need to have. So I am super, super excited that we are getting here, uh, in our culture and it just makes me happy. So with all that being said, guys, that's all the comments for the week, but I would love to know what you guys think about these reading the comments videos. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the premiere chat and join the gilded. Do that. Make sure you share this channel with people too. Maybe I talk about stuff that you guys are interested in and I would love to have more people here. I'd love to build this channel to a point where I can just do this channel. That'd be cool, right? Mm, that's kind of the pipe dream um yeah i don't know i just i feel like i can do this i feel like i can so anyway thank you guys so much for being here um hopefully i will be getting uh better better videos set up here really really soon uh camera should be coming today should be focusing on more video and whatnot and i look forward to seeing you all next time Right here on A Drink With Crazy, gonna do a Cyberpunk Edge Runners review. That's gonna be coming out tomorrow. I'm gonna finish it today and post it for tomorrow. Uh, and then hopefully keep you guys some content rolling five to seven days a week. Peace out, everybody. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, not peace out. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. That's what I'm supposed to say. Cheers. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.